What's up, guys? This is episode 15. Oh, sorry. Episode 16 of Hoops Talk with Dave's Joint. We have a special guest today, um, Coach Rob Wyatry from St. Edmunds Prep. Um, his teams have been very successful the last couple of years. Shout outs to um, St. Edmunds Prep. Coach, thank you for coming on to talk to me. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And it's just, um, you know, it's a blessing to be here with you today and get to talk a little basketball and try to um, get through the monotony of, of what's been happening day to day. So I'm happy to be here. Indeed. So let's talk about um, Rob Wyatry's co um, coaching philosophy. Okay. So I want to stop you there once. Rob's my younger brother. Well, I'm, Dan. I'm sorry, Coach Dan. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Mm -hmm. I, today, you know what? It's meant to be. Today is actually Rob's birthday, so we give him a little <laughs> shout out. You know, um, we'll give my brother Rob a shout out. But I appreciate that. Um, my coaching philosophy is, you know, it it changes. It varies from from year to year. But for the most part, we have what we call our non negotiables. At Saint Edmund Prep, uh, Saint Edmund Prep located in in Brooklyn, it's a uh, we get a lot of middle class type kids, and we try to instill in them work ethic from the day they enter the program and the values of teamwork and togetherness. You know, I know a lot of schools and teams try to do that and talk about family, but I think in our program, it's more than just talk. I think it's something that we, we kind of, we really believe in and it leads us to our successes. Awesome. Um, everybody, Coach Dan Wyatry. <laughs> thank, so, thank you. Um, so let's talk about where you start, where you started at. Um, so what part of Brooklyn are you from? And how long have, has basketball been a part of your life? That's an excellent, uh, excellent place to start. So I'm originally from Brooklyn, Flatbush section of Brooklyn. Um, grew up in St. Thomas Aquinas Parish. St. Mm. Thomas Aquinas Parish is known, famous for really two things I would say jump to people's mind. One is Chris Mullen. Uh, Chris Mullen and his family, the Mullen family, which grew up, um, I'm two blocks away from them where I grew up, and um, the Monsignor King Christmas Tournament, which I was lucky enough to work at as a little kid, play in in high school, and also now coach in, you know, at this level. So that's where I'm from. Uh, I started playing CYO basketball at St. Thomas back way back in 1984. Uh, played there till 1990. Went on to Nazareth High School in East Flatbush. Nazareth was about 10 minutes from my house. It was, uh, for me, it was a great school. My mm -hmm. father was a, was a football coach there. And that's one of the reasons I chose Nazareth was him and the football program. At Nazareth, I was able to play three sports, uh, football, basketball, and baseball, and meet a lot of, you know, meet a lot of friends, a lot of new people. From there, I went on to, um, to play college basketball at Concordia College in Bronxville. And then um, I was there for one year and transferred to Adelphi University and played there in Garden City. Uh, but that's kind of my journey. And then after that, got into the coaching, got the coaching bug. You know, while, while I was wrapping up my playing career, I knew that I wasn't going to be a professional basketball player, but I knew I could give back in another way, coaching. So I went back to St. Thomas and actually coached my brother Rob's CYO team when they were coming up in the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. And that's mm -hmm. where I got my start. I was lucky enough to, um, to get a job when I graduated from Adelphi. I got a job at, at, at St. Evan Prep as a math teacher and freshman basketball coach. The, um, the athletic director at the time was a guy by the name of Chris Wright, and he was also in charge of the math department. So Chris hired me twice. He hired me to, to teach math, and he also hired me as the freshman basketball coach at the time. And I've been there since. I've been there 24 years now. Um, and, you know, I, I love every minute of it. Wow. So you've been there since 1996. Yes. I started in uh, September 96. And at the time, St. Edmund was uh, just growing. It was an all-girls school. And they went co-ed in September 94. So my first, my first year there was actually very interesting. My first year there was the last all-girls graduating senior class. And then from there, it was, yeah, it was co-ed from there. And it was it was very uh, interesting dynamic that first year. So, um, what year did you graduate from Nazareth? I graduated from Nazareth in June 1992. Nice. So you were basically there for the first two years of um Robert, like well, actually the last couple of years of Robert Phelps. 
Yeah, you know, like I said, my father coached football there, so I was around the program at Nazareth from probably the mid-80s. And um, when I was trying to, to pick a high school, it came down to one or two schools, Nazareth and Zavarian were my two logical choices from where I lived. And um, I went to Nazareth, and uh, two of the big reasons, I, three reasons I chose Nazareth were actually, you know, obviously my dad being there, involved in the program in school, I was comfortable. Two was uh, Ted Gustus, who was the basketball coach there. And three was I, I had seen Robert Phelps play, you know, when I was in elementary school, and I was in awe of his ability. And um, Rob and I, we were in the school together for two years. My uh, first two years, he graduated in 1990. Uh, so my sophomore year was his senior year. Uh, he was on varsity. Obviously, I was on the JV. Rob was a great player, a hard worker. He was a role model for everybody in the program. and still is today, you know, as a coach, as a mentor. Awesome. So talk about um, your time at Adelphi University. Did you play there? I did. You know, my freshman year, I went to Concordia College in Bronxville, which was a Division II. And it just wasn't, um, it wasn't like Nazareth's program. Nazareth's program was based on hard work and family and the guys really pushing. Concordia, I thought it was going to be something and it wasn't. Um, so I got out of there after one year, made the transition to Adelphi, coached Jim O'Connor, great guy. I played there my sophomore and junior year for him, and he, then he moved on to uh, New Haven University in Connecticut, which was closer to his home. But, yeah, uh, Adelphi, we had some really good players, and we had some really good teams up there. Hmm. So, when, all right, so when you first started um, coaching at um, St. Edmunds, like what was the mission from day one? Yeah, so like I said, when I got there, that was um, I was the freshman coach. That was the first year St. Edmund was going to have three teams, freshman, JV, and varsity, because the oldest boys in the school were now juniors. Uh, John DeFiori, he was the uh, first head coach. He had moved up with the kids. He coached freshman the first year, JV the second year, and then that was the first varsity. And um, I got to work with him a little bit. And the mission was always to develop, develop the talent in the neighborhood that we get uh, for the most part, we, have a, we had a strong talent base in the neighborhood feeder programs from St. Thomas Aquinas, Good Shepherd, St. Mark's, a lot of the CYO, the local programs. And St. Edmunds has always been, even if you look at my roster this past year, we are a community-based uh, school, you know, and that's where we get most of our kids from. We'll, we'll get the occasional kid from outside the box, outside the range, but, um, you know, we're all about the neighborhood and developing kids. Awesome. Now, when you were at St. Edmunds, did, were you a part of the 1999 team that won the championship? I was. I was. I was. Like I said, I, that was my third year as the um, as the freshman coach, and I was helping out with the varsity. My brother Rob was also a junior on that team. He was a, a tri captain on that team, so I was there the whole run um, with Coach DeFiori and the rest of the staff, Coach Watson, Coach Genovese, and Coach Kiang. And we had a great ride. Uh, I missed the last game. At the time, I was in grad school. And um, my grad class, yeah, my grad classes were on Tuesday nights. And it seemed like all the playoff games were on Tuesday nights. And we kept winning. So I had cut class about three weeks in a row for the run. Uh, we won the city final in 99. We beat Cardinal Spellman. And then we advanced to the States, which was on a, a Tuesday against St. Mary's. And I had told Coach DeFiori, unfortunately, my professor told me if I missed another class, I was going to fail. So mm -hmm. I, had, I, missed the last, I missed what turned out to be the last game of that run, which, um, you know, I still, you know, I'm still upset about to this day. But that was a great team. Where was that, game, the la that last game played? It was out in Long Island. Um, oh, I don't wow, yeah. So there definitely wasn't any way that, you'd be, that you would have been able to make that game. No. Due to, it was, the, teach, it was due to the professor's threat. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. You know, my professors were at Fordham. I went to Fordham University for grad school. Oh, wow. Yeah. My professors were great. Yeah. And um, Dr. Cataro ran the program. He was understanding. But the fourth time, he, you know, he kind of said, you can't really miss another one. You got to bet to be here. So, um, you know, Coach DeFiori understood. And I explained to the boys why I wasn't there. But I was definitely with them in spirit that night. You probably might have been there. Good luck, Chum. <laughs> I like to think so, you know, at least mm. maybe whisper some positive thoughts into their ears, you know, during the game. Awesome. So in during your time at St. Edmund Prep, how many of the players have gone on to college? Wow, that's a good question. It, it's got to be go on to play in college or just go on to college? 
going going on to college. Oh, oh, every 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 player we've had through the program has gone on to college. There's no one who has not gone on to you know to um, try to earn a college degree, and we have a large number of them have gone on to also play in college. We've had um, at different levels, you know, at the Division three level, we've had three guys that turned out to be Division three All Americans. Wow. Andreas Pope, uh, Andreas Pope, who graduated in 2001 from us, was a All American at Plymouth State. Joe Finley, who graduated in 99, was the MVP of the city championship game. He uh, has his number retired at Hamilton College. And then um, David Louisan in 2011 was an All-American at St. Joseph's College in Brooklyn. We've had guys go on to Division II and um, play at such schools as uh, Dominican, Altine King, Queens College in Charlotte, North Carolina, Chris Bernard, one of my all-time favorite players. And my guard from this year, Shamar Laddie, is going to be going to Post University in Connecticut. Uh, we've also had um, a couple of guys go on and play Division One. Uh, Division One, Anthony Oglesby, mm-hmm. class of '98, the first great Eagle, played at New Hampshire. Uh, Rob Wyatry, my brother, played at St. Francis. Mm-hmm. Matt, yep, Matt Vitali, uh, class of 2002, played at Wagner College, and Jordan Williams, class of 2017, is currently playing at St. Francis College right now. Now. After that first championship, how many more did you guys go on to win after? We won division title 98, division title 99, city title 99. We won division title 2001. We lost in the city final to Cardinal Hayes. We won division title and city title in 2003. This time we beat Hayes in 03. Um, Since that time, we've won division titles in 2011, 2012. 2014 and this year in 2020 we mm. lost in the city finals unfortunately in 2012 to Iona prep and we lost this year right before the pandemic uh we lost back on march 6th we lost in the city final at fordham university against fordham prep but we had a great run now um talk about what what a regular game day is like at st francis oh I'm sorry st edmund prep regular game day is um it's really exciting. You know, we, we talk about there's a different vibe in the building on a school day when we have a game. You know how it is. You know, the kids, they're, they're excited. They love to play. They want their friends and family to see them play. We get a pretty good turnout in our gym. We have, we have a small gym, but we pack it, and we've got people wall to wall. So on a game day, it's exciting. You know, and the teachers are excellent. They'll see a kid in the hallways and, and give him a pat on the back and say, you know, good luck today in the game. So game days are very exciting, and the kids get up, go out there, get to showcase. Um, This past year was just, to me, this team that we just finished with in 2020, you know, we broke a record for um, most wins in the season. Mm -hmm. And we had such support, you know, throughout the season. We went on the road and we had a group of students that came with us on the road this year to games. So, um, yeah, game day to me, it's just, I love it. You know, I love the practices. You know, I'm Mm -hmm. a practice guy. And I say that the game day is really a reward for all their hard work. And it's also a reward for the students and the parents to see these kids go out and perform wearing the St. Edmund Prep uniform. Mm-hmm. Magical. Um, so let's go back to um, 1999. You guys actually beat Talik Brown in the semifinals, I believe? We did. You know, and I, what part of my responsibilities with that team when I was on the bench as an assistant was uh, keeping stats. So I still have all the stat sheets from, from that run. Uh, we did beat Talik Brown. We actually knocked them out. And I think it was the semifinals, you're correct. At Mount St. Michael's, I remember it well. It was a Tuesday night game. And, um, yeah, Talik was tough. He was a strong, a big, strong guard for high school. Went on to have a great career in college, national title at UConn. And we really focused on um, trying to deny him the ball. And Aaron Miles, who um, Aaron was one of my C- former CYO players at St. Thomas, who went on to St. Evan Prep. And Aaron guarded him. He had the primary responsibilities that night. And he held him under 10 points. Uh, Talik did roll his ankle, you know, in that game, and he wasn't able to complete the game, which helped us. But um, that was a tremendous victory. Mm. So let's fast forward to today. Um, yeah. What's the competition in the A division like? Like, everybody puts stock in the double A because it's, you know, a lot of prominent, you know, big time schools in the day in the double A. But the A has some talent too. Talk about that. That's a great, that's a great point and a great question. And, um, you know, I, it really, I get worked up when talking about the A division, you know, I played at Nazareth in the nineties when Nazareth was a double A 
power. So I, you know, and I kind of know the level a little bit. The A division is very strong. Uh, year in and year out, from from the first team to the last team, whether it's ten teams, eleven teams, it's very competitive. The coaching is phenomenal. I think that's the most underrated thing in the um, about the A division is the coaching. You've got guys that have been there forever. They're um, institutions. You know, Freddie Opper at Cardinal Spellman, he's the dean of Catholic school coaches. He's been there over 30 years. Joe McGrain, a um, good friend at Xavier. He's nearing, Joe was coaching Xavier when I was playing in high school for Nazareth. So you, the coaching is phenomenal. Um, the players are excellent. You know, I, I contend every year that the kids in our league, the best kids in our league could play at the AA level. You know, we, we've had phenomenal players over the years in our league, uh, like Talik Brown who've gone division one, my brother, Rob, guys like that. Um, Chaz Williams from Bishop Ford was, I, I think Chaz is the all time player in our league in the 24 years I've been part of the A division. To me, he was phenomenal right now. Currently, I, I think, you know, Farrell, Monsignor Farrell, Fordham prep, Xavier, there's a lot of good, good talented teams. Uh, my guy from this year, Shamar, you know, he was just a phenomenal player. You know, he was the, um, he was the player of the year in our league. And I think you're right. The A division does go because there's not a lot of newspaper coverage. And this is why I love you because you, mm -hmm. you, you promote all the kids. Um, mm -hmm. they, these guys go under the radar and um, you know, Shamar was as good as any guard this year. He was the MVP of our league and there's a lot of good players, you know, next year coming back, you got Blair Thompson over at Xavier. He's a division one prospect, six, six shooting guard. So th there are some really talented players in the league. Now, let's talk about Shamar. You know, what kind of player has he been with you throughout his four years? You know, um, I get emotional talking about Shamar. We, even though the season's over and we're in this pandemic, we talk every single day, you, probably multiple times a day. Um, you know, Shamar has been phenomenal. He walked in from day one focused and mature. He's from, he's from the neighborhood. He went to Marine Park Junior High School, which is a short walk from our school, wow. um, about, about 10 blocks. And he came in and he was focused. And he is the rare St. Eben athlete, uh, basketball athlete, that plays four years of varsity basketball. He's only the third guy to do that. Um, so he's been with me for over 100 Catholic League wars. Uh, he, he's excellent. He's as fast, shifty as they come. He works on his game. He's a leader. He's mature. I think a lot of schools missed the boat on him, to be honest with you. Um, a lot of Division yeah. One schools missed out on him. You know, I, I've reached out to at least 50, 60 schools. And I know during the pandemic, a lot of the um, live events were cut short and the um, postseason stuff, but it shouldn't have even come down to that. And he's, he is a Division I guard. Like I said, my two, I have two brothers that were Division I point guards, one at St. Francis. My brother, Mike, uh, who was a 10-year pro, played at South Carolina State. And, you know, I know what it looks like. You know, he is a Division I guard. Having said that, uh, Coach Mark Kuntz at Post University in Connecticut, um, he's getting a great player. And we spoke, I spoke to Coach Kuntz on the phone the other day when Shamar committed over the weekend, and he's super excited to have a player of Shamar's caliber at Post, and I think he's going to go on there and be one of their all-time players. And I, I couldn't be happier for him and his family that he's going to get a free education, you know, at the next level. Now, aside from um, Shamar, what other talented players did you have over there? Um, talking about this year? Yeah. Yeah, we had a very good team. We, had, we, had, um, we, won, we won 21 games uh, during the season. We were 21-6. and six. We won our division at 13-3, and three, and we were tough. We had a senior-oriented team. I had 10 seniors. At least three or four of them are going to be playing in college. Shamar is going to be a post. Um, Cameron Shields, a uh, Far Rockaway native. He's very gonna talented. Go to very talented guard. He was our leading scorer during the playoffs. He's going to, he, uh, unfortunately for Cam, he missed seven games this year with an ankle and that hurt him a little bit. Uh, Cam's going to go to Nassau community college and play there next year. And I think you'll see him at a scholarship school in two years. Sean Edwards, who was an old league player, uh, our top shooter. Sean made all league the last two years. He's going to SUNY Oswego. Um, he was very comfortable with the coaching staff and the players over there. I think Sean will have a big impact over there. So those three guys are going to be playing next year. And then we've got a couple other guys that are still on the fence about what they're going to do. They're all going to college, but some of them are going to choose schools more for the academic side. 
rather than the basketball side. But those three guys, I expect them to have really good college careers. In the junior class, a uh, top returning player is Malik Cole. He's a six foot three inch guard, and he's going to be a college prospect for, for the class of 21. Mm. Talk about that semifinal game at Christ the King against LaSalle. Like, that was a really good playoff game. Like, I was practically on the edge of my seat. Well, actually, the floor. <laughs> the edge of the floor. <laughs> and um, you got, it's like, I feel like that game could have gone either way. And then, fortunately, a buzzer beater gets hit, and I see a lot of purple and black on the floor. Like, yep. it, it felt like it felt like it was just yesterday. Like, tell me about that moment. Yeah, first off, I want to um, send best wishes to get healthy again to Coach Jerome Pinnell. You know, he's been affected by the virus, mm. um, and I hear he's doing a little bit better. So my thoughts and prayers are with Coach Pinnell and his family. He's a great coach and um, a great mentor for those kids. It, it was a phenomenal game, like you said. It was um, it was a Tuesday night semifinal game in Christ the King on the big stage, on the big court. You know, mm-hmm. Christ the King is a, you know, legendary facilities. M- most of my guys have never been there. So we got to play at CK. Uh, we were the second game of the night. First game was Farrell and Fordham, which ended on a buzzer beater. Uh, Fordham beat them. And um, that so we knew if we won, who we'd be playing. So every all eyes were on us. It was the feature game. It was a great game. It was the third time we met during the year. First time we met in December before Christmas, their point guard, Michael Carruthers, was out with an injury. And we beat them pretty bad. We beat them by about 15 to 20. But they, we knew they were missing a guy. The second time we played them was on uh, January 31st at LaSalle. We had a Friday night triple over there. Um, and it was an emotional night. It was there. They did a ring night at LaSalle honoring one of their past teams. And my guard, Cameron Shields, was out with an injury. And they beat us in a close game. So we were 1-1 during the season. This was the rubber match. This, everybody was healthy on both teams. There was no, going to be no excuses. And it was a trip to the championship game on the line. And obviously there's nerves on both teams. Both teams were running up and down early, not many baskets being scored. We jumped up. Uh, we jumped out to a 14-point lead in the second quarter, 26-12. And LaSalle, a lot of heart, they responded with a 12 nothing run to end the first half. Well, they had a buzzer beater at halftime on a putback, and they, they uh, cut it to 26-24 at the half. So a two-point game at halftime. Everybody's got the nerves out. The second half was back and forth, and the last three minutes of that game were, were so intense. I mean, we made a big shot. They made a big shot. You know, we got to stop. They got to stop. It was just great basketball. Um, our guy was on the line at the end of the game, Shamar Laddie, with under 10 seconds left. We had a one-point lead, and um, he missed – the front end of a one and one, which is very rare. He's a clutch player. LaSalle rebounded the ball. I don't believe they had any timeouts left. And um, Michael Carruthers pushed the ball up the sideline and we trapped him. Shamar didn't put his head down after the free throw. Him and him and Cam trapped him around half court and Michael threw a cross court pass sideways. And Kyle Dunn, um, who's one of our star juniors, he was in the game for defensive reasons. Kyle stole the ball and basically went in and, and laid the ball in at the buzzer. And the place went nuts. You know, you saw all of our, um, our bench, mm-hmm. our alumni that were at the game. Everybody rushed the court. And it was, uh, I was happy for the boys. They got to experience something like that. And um, it's one of the best memories of the season. Then the championship game at Fordham against yep. Fordham Prep, which is literally down the block from Rose Hill, which is basically a home game for them. You guys wound up losing, unfortunately. Like, talk about that game. Sure. Um, Ford and Prep is another really good team every year. They've been in the finals almost every year the last five years, but they hadn't won it. You know, they'd lost tough games against Nazareth. They lost against Farrell. They lost against going back. I think it was um, Kennedy Catholic a few years ago. A lot of tough games. And Coach Downey does a really good job. We've played each other in the playoffs four times in the last five years. And the games have all been tight. This year, the two teams were pretty even again. They beat us early in the year at Fordham, close game. We beat them by one at Edmonds later in the season, close game. The game was back and forth. They jumped on us early. They jumped out first. We, uh, we came right back. We led at halftime. We led by four, 29-25. We scored the, uh, Cam scored the first basket of the third quarter on a layup. We were up six, and we went cold. Um, Fordham ended the third period by hitting a couple of three-pointers, 
and they took a lead going into the fourth. They were up eight points. And that's tough because now the kids start to get a little nervous. And, you know, there's a lot of people there. You know, we had, I'm going to say, a couple hundred people at the game um, representing both schools. So big crowd, big stage, big court. Nerves start to set in. The mm. game was back and forth. We came right back, and we cut it to 50 to 49 with about three minutes left. And we had a couple of chances to take the lead. You know, we stole the ball, and we didn't convert. Mm. And then, um, Sean, unfortunately, uh, Sean Edwards fouled out of the game. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that was a key, that was a turning point of the game. I thought, you know, mm -hmm. we're down one, he was having a solid game and my best shooter fouled out. So, um, we wound up coming up a little bit short. Fordham ended the game, uh, really on the foul line. You know, they did a good mm -hmm. job converting on the foul line and, um, they beat us, you know, and my hat's off to Fordham. They earned it, you know, coach Downey. I know it's been a long time since Fordham's mm -hmm. won. And, right. uh, my guys were, my guys were heartbroken after the game, but, you know, we let them know that they had nothing to be, you know, nothing to be um, embarrassed about, that um, we had a phenomenal season and um, could have went either way. Mm. So talk about the Aviator basketball camps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Aviator has always been a place. Aviator is like kind of in our backyard. Um, it's, it's about a mile and a half away from St. Edmund Prep. I was there when they were first building it, when they were first um, – you know, building the facilities for basketball and ice hockey. They brought me in as a neighborhood coach and athletic director about rentals, about renting mm. the court, renting the ice. And um, the people at Aviator have always been great. Uh, Dean Harvey, who's no longer over there, he just left. Um, Mike and Julian, who are there now. We always have a great relationship with Aviator. Uh, my brother Rob actually worked there as the basketball manager for a year. Mm. Uh, it was phenomenal. We played in there. Um, they ran a holiday tournament for a couple of years. And it just so happened that when the Monsignor King tournament had shut down for a few years, um, the King tournament had shut down due to the school, the elementary school had closed and the floor had really gotten bad at St. Thomas for a while. Mm -hmm. So they kind of shut the tournament. They, their CYO program had folded up for a little bit and Aviator picked up the slack by starting their own holiday tournament. And we played mm -hmm. at Aviator and it was like a home game for us. You know, we played there four years in a row. We got to play some great teams. We played the, I think the first game ever in the tournament, we played Amityville from Long Island, legendary coach at the time. Um, mm. coach, I think Coach D'Agostino. And um, we actually beat them. You know, the first game ever in the holiday tournament aviator in the first round and advanced to the semifinals against Poly Prep. Mm -hmm. um, we lost, unfortunately, we lost to Poly Prep and played in the consolation game. But um, we, we, aviator for us, it, it still is. Um, we go there, we practice every now and then when our, when our school is, you know, booked up. And um, I wanted to give back a little bit. So I came back a number of years ago and started running summer tournaments, uh, summer, sorry, summer basketball camps there for the youth. Mm -hmm. And these weren't, these weren't really for the, um, for the better kids. These were more for the beginning type kid. Right. So I was happy to do that. I did that for five years. The first year we did it, it was kind of put together at the last second. I remember we only had 11 kids at the camp. Um, and the last year we did it, the, the camp was at capacity. You know, it, it had quite, you know, gone up tenfold in terms of numbers. So that was something I was really proud of. And um, actually a couple of the kids who, who are alumni from the camp wound up coming over and being future student athletes at St. Edmund Prep. So I, I loved giving back my time to Aviator. They're always good people over there. Mm -hmm. So the pandemic is going on right now. Um, what are you doing with, this, with the players, you know, the returning players, I should say, you know, to keep them motivated. Because I know that remote, remote learning is so difficult now with these kids. Um, like, are you guys doing, like, Zoom calls, team building, like, Zoom workouts? Yeah, we're, we're doing everything. So I kind of have, like, um, three different groups that I'm working with right now in terms of that stuff. I'm still communicating with the graduating seniors to make sure they're all set, make sure they're finishing strong academically. So we have our own side group chat. Um, then I have the group from this year, you know, the, the, the team from this year, the full 16, the 10 seniors and the six juniors, and just sending them stuff, constant reminders, really want to stay connected. And then I have that next group. The next group is the rising kids plus the returning kids. We've been zo doing Zoom workouts for the last few weeks. We work out Mondays and Wednesdays via Zoom. I send them a number of um, workouts that we do together. You know, I set the camera up in the backyard and I do it with them. My nephew, uh, who's, who's going to be 10 years old in July, he works out. Danny Schmidt, you know, one of the top little guys on Staten Island, is going to be a 
player, big player someday. He does the workout with us. So we are staying connected. Um, we're using the, um, the Phil Beckner workout. Phil Beckner is an NBA trainer. Mm. He, fa most famously, he most famously works with Damian Lillard. And um, Phil, had put, Phil put together a workout for the pandemic called the driveway workout. Where all you need is a ball. You don't even need a basket. So we've been doing that workout. And it's a, it's a good solid hour on ball handling, conditioning, footwork. Um, myself and my JV coach, Jim Walsh, uh, we've been doing the workout now with the boys for about three weeks. And I, we try to um, instill in them the importance of this time. You know, if we were together right now, we'd be doing a lot at school. We'd be in the weight room. We'd be having open gyms. We'd be playing team camps. But unfortunately, we're not able to do that. So this is, this is what we need to do to get ourselves prepared for next season. And um, nobody's going to feel sorry for us at the end of the day. You know, we're, uh, we're going to have an X on our chest next year because we were successful this year. And a lot of the kids who are going to be playing next year with the St. Edmund Prep uniform, they were not a huge part of that team this year, but they're still going to be marked. So I, they need to understand that this time is, is critical for their development. And also, I'm getting to know a little bit about their commitment level. I got kids that are texting me left and right. All right, I just did the workout. What else do you have for me? Or I want to get faster. <laughs> what, else, what else can you give me? And, you know, that's as a teacher in the school and as a coach, um, as an educator, that's something that I, I, you know, I love. I dream about that stuff. Indeed. Final question. What's next in the future for Coach Dan Wyatry and the St. Edmund Prep Eagles? Yeah. So, I mean, we have, um, you know, we get together. You know, we still play. You know, I just turned 46 a few weeks ago. And we have a good group that plays uh, three nights a week at St. Edmunds. It's some of my friends, some of my high school teammates. Um, some of the Edmonds alumni guys, you know, guys ranging in age from 18 to 35. And we get together and all we talk about is the, you know, is the program and the good old days. And, and those guys, not only do they come back and play at night, but they come and support the program in the games. And, um, you know, that's something that I cherish. They, some of them will ask me, you know, coach, how long or how, where do you see yourself going with this? Like you just said. And I said, guys, you know, I, I'm a St. Edmund Prep Eagle first and foremost. And I'm going to do this as long as I can. As long as the building is standing at 2474 Ocean Avenue, we're going to, um, we're going to try to keep promoting the program and we're going to keep striving and, and live up to the reputation. Um, we call it, you know, an Eagles for life, you know, and um, that's the goal. You know, we want them to come back. We want them to be successful in their future, whether they play sports or not in college. We want them to be good parents, uh, good brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, good in the workforce. You know, I'm, I, I get, you know, emotional talking about my alumni. Uh, and I'm so happy. That, again, I'll mention my nephew one more time. That, you know, he, he's going to be 10 in July. And mm -hmm. he was at the city championship game at Fordham University in 2012, you know, as a two-year-old. And he remembers parts of that experience. When he came back this year. Wow. Yeah, he came, when he was sitting behind my bench this year. You know, we're all about family. You know, at the city finals behind my bench this year with my mom, my dad, you know, um, my two brothers, my sister, and my nephew, Danny. And he remembers it. He says, he said, I remember being here. You know, and that's, that's a long time ago. And he, you know, he's walking around and he likes, when he plays for his CYO program here in Staten Island, um, you know, he's wearing the numbers of my best guys. You know, he says, I'm, I'm going to wear number 11, you know, because I want to be like Shamar, you know, or I want to wear, uh... yeah. You know, I want to wear number four because I'm going to be like outside, you know. So um, that's, that's where I see the program going. I see it as, as um, my legacy, you know, to the neighborhood, to the school, something that I'm going to do as long as I can. And, um, you know, I just want to continue to coach these kids and be part of it. You know, I, I think it's an honor and a privilege for me to, um, to work at the school. I work with a great co-athletic director, Jim Grillo, you know, another St. Francis College grad. And we have a lot of fun every day, you know, in the office. And I want to mm -hmm. do this for as long as I possibly can. And one of my long-term goals is someday to get to coach my nephew, Danny, you know, at, at the high school level, you know, and, and uh, we joke around that he's going to be, he's outside playing right now, you know, he, that wow. he's going to be, the first, that he's going to be the first, uh, I think we have eight 1000 point scorers in school history. You know, Shamar is the all-time scorer with 1500 points. I, we joked that my nephew is going to be the first 2000 point scorer in, uh, in school history. So that, that's, that's the goal. Awesome. Well, thank you, Coach, so much for coming to share your testimonial. And I wish you and the Eagles nothing but the best moving forward. 
Thank you. God bless you. Keep doing what you're doing. We need mm -hmm. more guys like you that are promoting the, um, the high school kids, promoting the, um, the history of the sport. I love your post. You know, keep it up. You know, love it. God bless you. Thanks, Coach. Well, everybody, this is episode 16. Um, check this out on YouTube, IGTV, and Facebook. Stay safe. God bless. Peace.